This movie is set not far in the future. North America has been through a civil war driven by friction between political factions. We meet a mother named Niska and her 11-year-old daughter living off the grid and on the run. In this movie's imagined future, children are the property of the state and must be surrendered to government schools for education and assimilation. Niska doesn't want any of that, but she ends up letting her daughter go so the child can receive medical attention, and thus is the stage set for an eventual raid to recover her. First of all, this movie is quite modest in both scope and accomplishment, but ambitious in its reach. This story of a mother and her daughter trying to stay safe from exterior forces addresses themes of racism and colonialization. Alas, however important its messages, the film says nothing new or particularly profound. It admirably tackles tough issues, but the movie is a lackluster story. This dystopian sci-fi drama is distinguished by featuring a largely indigenous cast. Unfortunately, the film itself is very unexceptional. It's yet another story involving grim dystopian futures and a seemingly ordinary kid who gradually discovers that she possesses extraordinary powers that might help change things at last. This movie intriguingly explores the systematic eradication of indigenous peoples. These moments have energy and purpose to them that help them work, mostly thanks to strong performances by the cast. While this proves to be the most interesting element, it cannot quite eradicate the overly familiar feeling of the rest of it. When it leans into a familiar genre tropes involving young adult-style dystopian features and such, it gets fairly tiresome. It falters when it leans too close to the conventions of that already creaky genre. The first act is moderately intense. Niska and her daughter are living off the grid when circumstances force them to head back to the city. However, when the authorities close in, Niska makes the heartbreaking decision to give her daughter up. From here, the movie flashes forward 10 months, setting up some new plot threads that disappointingly abandon the tense oppression that values visualization over exposition. The movie then decidedly shifting into not only something formulaic, but the standard dime a dozen young adult story. Another problem is that the movie expands into something more plot-focused without fleshing out any of its characters or pressing social themes. It simply becomes less interesting, stimulating, and entertaining the longer it goes on. The movie doesn't spend much time in the Nutmarish Academy itself, which is also frustrating considering some of the more disturbing scenes come from there. Moreover, the science fiction elements add little to the narrative. In the takeover of the school compound scenes, not only is the action itself underwhelming and unforgettable, but again, the movie embraces myth for a befuddling conclusion that doesn't amount to much of anything. Visually, it resembles just about every other young adult dystopian flick out there, but there's definitely more of an edge here that ends up going to waste. Just about every story element here is underdeveloped and unsatisfying. Overall, the movie's attempt to fuse the thought-provoking narrative at its center onto a more commercially viable structure is an experiment that doesn't quite work. It's admirable for tackling significant issues and through a feminist and indigenous lens. Unfortunately, this film is mostly uninvolving and underwhelming.